we have eight tracks here. We have 10 tracks out in the storage yard. These, these machines right here are called rail mounted gantry cranes and they straddle two tracks at a time. So if I had if I had two trains here, I could be loading one and discharging one all at the same time. If you notice there's a big coil on the side here of the RMG, and that's an electrical coil. These are powered by electricity. So it runs up and down the track, the spool unwinds and then winds back up as it goes. We have uh, two major rails, um, rail road companies that come in here, the UP and the BNSF. So we're, we're handling cargo on the BNSF for Hyundai and MOL and APL on the UP. percent for APL, a little less than that for the other clients. And all these white trucks that you see in the terminal here that are moving containers around, right now they're diesel trucks. And the Port of Los Angeles is working with each of the customers to switch out those trucks to more uh, and, uh, environmentally friendly units such as LNG. We're actually even looking into an electric uh, truck to move uh, containers around the terminal. Again, things to improve the environment because diesel obviously is, is not the cleanest burning uh, unit out there. However, there are new 2007 uh, diesel engines that do clean a lot, that do burn a lot cleaner, which we're exploring as well. But LNG is one that's being looked at. We have one terminal that uses propane as their tractors that move containers around the facility as well. A chassis shop, and that is for anything really that's going to go out on the road. Container repair or chassis repair. Here you see some cargo on the ground. Ideally the way we like to work here is to keep our import containers on wheels we put our exports and our empties close to the ship or on the ground. The idea behind that is we know when the exports are going to leave. We don't know when the imports are going to leave. So we want we're going to go take one first. Thank you. Um, we want to make sure that when the customer gets here, his container's ready. That, that provides a quick turn time, that 15 minute turn time. Here with the exports, we put them down here close to the ship. The drivers are able to make small circles to and from the ship. That improves the productivity, the amount of containers we can get per hour to the ship. So here's our berth. It's 4,000 feet of berth. We're berth 302 to 305. We have 12 ship-to-shore cranes. They're 120 feet high. They reach. They can reach 18 across. Most of our vessels are 16 wide. On the on the I mean on the uh, cranes itself, you'll see a bunch of cameras here on the sill beams, right here. And we're about to introduce new technology at the crane level, similar to that at the front gate, the OCR optical character recognition. And we're, we'll be able to tell electronically what containers come on and go off the vessel. It's about 4,200 folks. 4,200? Sorry? Um, this particular vessel, it, they can go six high here, and then below the deck, it'll go nine deep. And it's 16 wide. Do they just rest on top of each other? While um, well, see these yellow pins right here? Those are called cone pins. And there are locking cones. Anyway, there are, there are these metal cones yeah. that when the driver comes up with the export container, he'll raise it up above the chassis. Swingman will put the cones in the bottom corners of the container. It'll load it up, and they're semi-automatic. 
they'll lock on top of the next one. The idea is to maintain a certain amount of space so that we can freely work the mess. We want to be able to take the cargo off and place it somewhere. So we're always we're always counting the, the number of spots as well as the, the amount of chassis that we have in the yard. Um, up here on our left, we have refrigerated containers. Um, so there's some gen sets on the on the ground, so they're able to plug in and. Uh, maintain their temperature whether it be you know, cold or hot. Before a driver leaves, he, you know, he picks up a container, checks out the chassis, makes sure everything seems roadworthy for him. If he has a problem with it, he can go to the flip line and we'll give him a new chassis, or one that he chooses. Um, if he doesn't, actually he can go straight. Um, we're going to just go out to the outgate. Um, so, if, if there's just a minor repair, maybe he's missing a light or a lens or a front flap, he can stop at this roadability station and the mechanics there will take care of these smaller problems. Right now it's strictly voluntary. I saw it been on a quarter county since 911, the trucks are scanned and the radiation to protect whatever might be. You guys have that here? Yes. It's, Called, so you don't sneak in with, you know. It's called a non-intrusive inspection by customs, and it's basically, they call it a back inspection. It's, a, it's like a gamma ray slash x-ray machine. Oh, you know, it's when you go to the airport and you put your stuff through the, on the conveyor and it rides through. Well, it's the same sort of technology, but it scans the whole container, and it's able to detect it. They have a manifest, so they know what they expect to see. And they'll do some spot checks, or they may get some information that that would, you know, lead them to looking at a particular.